Hello. We are going to talk about the anatomy of the femoral hernia. Uh, femoral hernias are not as common as inguinal hernias, but the anatomy is possibly even more important because of the risks of a femoral hernia to the small bowel. So, um, that's what we'll do. We'll look at the relevant anatomy, stuff nearby, what the causes of it might be, and uh, talk about some clinical bits and bobs at the end, all right? So when we're talking about hernias, what are we, what are we talking about? Well, what we're worried about are, um, so here's the, this is the abdomen, <coughs> the abdomen. Diaphragm's up here, separating the thorax from the abdomen. Now the pelvis is down here, but you can see that the, the abdominal contents are, they, 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 yeah, they're going down as far as they can. And the small bowel has a mesentery, which means it can move around, which is important to its normal function. Whereas the large bowel largely doesn't have a mesentery. This bit does, but the large bowel is rather largely fixed in place. And all of this, is held inside the abdominal cavity, mostly by muscle. There are muscle layers running around here. Um, the diaphragm is holding it in up here. You've got your pelvic floor down here. And all of that, and you've got back muscles and what have you, all of that is retaining the pressures inside the abdominal cavity, inside the abdominal cavities. There are quite significant pressures inside us. The pressure in the thorax changes as we breathe. The pressure in the abdomen changes when we lift things, when we, <laughs> when we squeeze muscles, when we defecate, when we, you know, for all sorts of reasons. So, if there is a weakness in this muscular wall surrounding the abdominal contents, there is a risk of the abdominal contents leaving the abdomen and that would essentially be a hernia and there are a few weak spots where this typically happens. So down here, if we're talking about a femoral hernia, femoral means thigh. This is the thigh here. So the, the thigh, the lower limb, does have a link to the torso. And we have something here called the inguinal ligament, which we'll go back to in a moment. But down here you can see some blood vessels. You can see the femoral artery and the femoral vein. And a femoral hernia would be a bulge medial to the femoral vein. It would be down here, so it would be a bulge in the thigh. If we use some green Play-Doh to re represent the small bowel. Um, you might see a mass forming, hopefully not that big, but maybe you might see a mass forming down here. So pubis bone is here, femoral hernia. Oh, there's no bulge on this side. There's a bulge on that side. Strange. It's inferior to the inguinal ligament. Hmm. Seems like a femoral hernia. And it could be fat. It could be connective tissue, but it's likely to be small bowel. And if it's small bowel, that's dangerous because it's going to have to pass through something called the femoral canal, which is a narrow connective tissue space, tube, pipe. And, um, if the small bowel gets pushed through there, um, its blood supply might get cut off. It might become ischemic and, um, and start to die, which would be a bad thing. So this is where we would look for a femoral hernia and a bulge. Okay, so what's the anatomy that accounts for this then? Well, here is a model of the, the lower limb. So we're looking at the thigh here. Um, this is the abdomino-pelvic bit, the torso, this is the thigh down here. Look, there are those blood vessels, the femoral vein and the femoral artery and the femoral nerve within it. Now this here is a ligament. This is the inguinal ligament and it's running from the pubis bone to the ilium, to the anterior superior iliac spine. And this, this ligament is a connective tissue partly formed from the muscles of the abdominal wall, but it's it's a demarcation, it's a line, it's a boundary between the torso and the lower limb. And the blood vessels that pass beneath it, well, you don't want to kink them when you're flexing the thigh, when you're moving this joint. So they're surrounded by connective tissue passing through something called the femoral sheath, which supports them, stops them kinking, looks after them, lets them do their thing. Now medial to the femoral vein, 
is a space and that is the femoral canal and that space allows the femoral vein to expand because veins can be a bit stretchy so if the blood pressure inside the torso is high or the pressure inside the torso is high then blood might not return from the lower limb to the torso so easily so the vein can distend into that that space there aren't really any spaces in the body it's kind of um it's, there's connective tissue here there's there are some lymphatics and what have you but it, it means that the vein can push things out of the way and the vein can distend and get bigger so in that femoral canal that is a potential weak point in that muscular surrounding of the abdominopelvic cavity. So there's a possibility that a loop of small bowel could push through the femoral canal and appear here. So inferior to the femoral ligament and in the thigh. So then, in the case of a femoral hernia, the small bowel would run posterior to the inguinal ligament and appear inferior to the inguinal ligament. So this is an important landmark for us. There is a bit more. The lower limb is covered by connective tissue, a tough fascia called the fascia lata. And that holds everything in place, holds all the muscles and what have you in place. Um, but there is a superficial vein, or in fact multiple superficial veins, that will drain into the femoral vein. So up here, Right in the area that we might expect to see a femoral hernia, there's an opening in the fascia lata so that these superficial veins, largely we're talking about the great or long saphenous vein, can drain into the femoral vein. So this, um, this opening, so normally um, the, the fascia would keep everything tied down, but as there's an opening here, a hole, that means that a femoral hernia, a loop of small bowel that passed through the femoral canal, deep to the inguinal ligament, would appear in this second weakness, this second hole in fascia, the fascia lata, which would then, then allow that small bowel to bulge out anteriorly and be something that you could palpate. Now the pubis bone is here, the pubic tubercles up here. So then this, this femoral hernia would be also be uh, lateral to and inferior to the pubic tubercle. And look, as it's right next to the femoral vein, a femoral hernia can actually compress the femoral vein, which might cause other effects in the lower limb. So not only do we have the femoral canal, but we also have this saphenous opening. Connective tissue is incredibly important in the body. So why might a femoral hernia occur then? Well, as we've seen, there's an anatomical weak point in the muscular connective tissues that are holding everything in place. Um, small bowel has a mesentery and is able to move around, so it might move out through a weakness. But also, there's a possibility that um, through like long-term regular raising of intra-abdominal, intra-thoracic or intra-torso pressures, such as with constipation, or breathing difficulties, you know, where you have to work really hard to breathe, breathe in and breathe out, or uh, pregnancy. So long-term raised pressures inside the torso can cause the femoral vein to dilate for the reasons we described earlier. It's harder for the blood to get back into the torso. So if the, if the femoral vein keeps dilating, then it keeps pushing into those connective tissues of the femoral canal. So maybe that is a contributing factor in stretching the femoral canal and developing a weakness. Femoral hernias are less common than inguinal hernias. An inguinal hernia involves the inguinal canal. So an inguinal hernia would initially be superior to the inguinal ligament or at the level of the inguinal ligament, although when that bowel pushes out, it might actually overlap the inguinal ligament. So a femoral hernia is inferior to the inguinal ligament, an inguinal hernia is superior to the inguinal ligament. Femoral hernias and inguinal hernias are more common on the right side of the body, possibly because of embryological origins of the gonads descending and that sort of thing, possibly because the sigmoid colon has an effect of preventing this on the left side. Um, 
Femoral hernias are more common in women than men because women are more likely to have a wider pelvis, changing some of the shapes here, making more space for the femoral canal. Because of the anatomy that we've described, a femoral hernia can be more dangerous. The small bowel is passing through a pretty narrow and pretty rigid connective tissue canal, which means that the small bowel is at great risk of strangulation, that is, cutting off its blood supply and the bowel becoming ischemic and becoming necrotic. Very, very dangerous. So if the small bowel is recognized to have passed through the femoral canal and formed a femoral hernia, usually the only treatment option is surgical. Um, so the stuff that's not supposed to be outside the abdomen is put back in the abdomen and the femoral canal is reinforced and repaired with mesh. Um, and often if the bowel has strangulated, well this is a medical emergency, there are only so many hours that the small bowel can survive without blood supply, so it becomes imperative that the small bowel is returned to the abdomen quickly and that blood supply is restored. Anyway, that's the anatomy of a femoral hernia. Um, just remember those key points, the inguinal ligament, femoral hernia inferior to it, get the femoral vessels, all those things, right? Useful stuff. Okay, see you next week. Bye.